these powerful bills are quite strong enough to injure anything or anyone that dares to interfere with the birds. But now, as the pair sit together on their nest site, they're used to deliver the most tender of caresses. What follows may seem like dueling. But actually, it is, once again, a kind of dancing. The sequence of movements is long and complicated. If both partners perform without mistakes and in harmony, then at last there comes the most intimate act of all. Mating in birds can be a very quick business, no more than a brief meeting of genital openings. In albatross, it's unusually leisurely. So, pairs are formed and the union is consummated. For most birds, the pair will now stay together for several weeks, if not for several years. In the case of these waved albatross in Galapagos, they'll stay together for the rest of their lives. And that, when you come to think of it, is very unusual. Insects don't stay together, frogs and toads don't, lizards and snakes don't. Why should birds? Well, the answer is there. No female bird can manage to fly around with an egg inside her, let alone several, for the days or weeks it needs to develop. As soon as she can, she lays it. But then caring for it is a major job, and for these albatross, as for most birds, it's a job for two. It would be nice to think that such a devoted pair was held together by mutual affection. The evidence, I'm afraid, doesn't support that. It's not so much the affection that one bird has for the other as the concern it has for its own genes which are in the egg which the two produce together. If, without jeopardising those, either bird could find a way of spreading its genes more widely, the evidence suggests it would take it.